What if I told you there's a few simple tricks that could transform your underwater visibility from a foggy frustration to a crystal clear paradise? In this video, I'm going to show a critical hack I picked up from diving around the world over the past 10 years on how to prevent mask fog so you have the perfect vision every time. But first, I'll share my biggest diving mistake from diving in Palau for the first time because you are probably making the same mistakes. For the first few days, every time I went on a dive, my mask would fog extremely quickly and ruin the dive. It wasn't until I asked our dive master for help that I was finally able to go on dives and take in the amazing beauty and the pristine reefs around me. So what was I doing wrong? Imagine your dive mask as a miniature greenhouse where temperature differences create the perfect storm for fog formation. The warm, moist air from your breath collides with the cooler water outside, causing condensation on the inside of your mask. If you're in warm water with intense currents, you might heat up and sweat a bit. This is going to make it game over. For your vision. This temperature tango is the primary culprit behind the foggy frustration with many divers. But there's more to this misty mystery than meets the eye. Your own body heat radiating from your face contributes to this foggy phenomenon. And let's not forget about the sneaky saboteur residual oils. These invisible troublemakers can linger on your face from manufacturing processes or even your own hands. These oils create a surface that water vapor loves to cling to, exasperating the fogging issue. Understanding these fog forming factors is the first step in your quest for crystal clear underwater vision. Now, Combating the fogging isn't one and done thing. It takes some diligence and maintenance, which we'll dive into now. It's time to deploy your anti-fog defenses, which you ideally want to do before every dive. Think of anti-fog solutions as a force field against the misty menace that will cling to any oil buildup. There are three different methods you'll want to be aware of, all with varying pros and cons. First up is the spit method. Yes, that's right. You have the perfect anti-fog solution built in right into that mouth of yours that you never need to worry about forgetting. Saliva has anti-oil properties and will break down oil. Spit into the mask while it's dry and make sure to cover the lens by rubbing it in. It's important to note that saliva contains bacteria, but it's your own and it's already in your body, so no problem. However, avoid the spit method if it's not your own mask. Don't do it. Secondly, we have baby shampoo. It's cheap and will help clean the oils off the lens without burning your eyes. This is way too much, but doesn't matter. I mean, the most important thing is you get good coverage, get all the signs. You can often mix it with water to dilute it and make it last longer, but it's fine to use at full strength. Lastly, you have your more professional liquids that apply a coat and tend to last longer than any of the methods I mentioned before. These liquids are pricier, but will add a barrier to actively ensure no liquid sticks to the lens. While commercial solutions are the gold standard, don't overestimate the power of the do-it-yourself remedies in a pinch. Whichever method you prefer, they all work effectively on a prepared mask. Make sure to spread and rub the solution across the whole inside of the mask lens. Then give that lens a light rinse or quick dunk in the wire, and then it's good to go. Don't rub the solution off, just light and quick rinse. The key is to leave a thin film behind. This is your invisible armor against the fog. As an added tip, make sure your face is dry before putting your mask on, as extra moisture is ammunition for fog formation. Once your mask is on, resist the urge to breathe out through your nose. Each exhale 
through your nose is like inviting that fog to set up shop on that mask. Lastly, if all else fails and you find yourself a foggy mask, we can still salvage the dye. Flood your mask to defog the inside. Hold the top edge and then breathe hard out your nose to purge the water. You might get a bit of salt in the eye, but at least you can see. Repeat as often as needed. Evaluate if you're running hot and try to slow down and cool off. If you've done everything right to this point, this should not happen, but everyone forgets to defog your mask from time to time. Treat anti-fog application as a pre-dive ritual, as an essential as checking your air supply. You can even include it as a part of your buddy check. There's one last piece to this fog puzzle and a secret about new dive masks that might surprise you. Even if you're doing everything right, you could still end up with that foggy mask nightmare. When you first unwrap your shiny new dive mask, it's harboring a hidden adversary, a thin layer of silicone. This invisible intruder is a remnant from the manufacturing process and it's got to go. While there are fancy solutions available to remove this silicone safely, my wife and I have stuck with two basic methods to prepare our masks. Your first weapon of choice, a humble tube of toothpaste. The most effective ones contain microplastic beads, but these are being phased out due to environmental concerns about microplastic. But there are plenty of options that work just as good and they don't have any microplastic danger. This mild abrasive acts like a gentle exfoliant for your mask, slowing away the unwanted silicone layer. Gently massage the toothpaste onto the inside the lens, treating it with the same care you'd give your own skin. Rinse thoroughly with warm water, ensuring no toothpaste residue remains. Test it out by breathing heavily on that lens. It should defog quickly. I usually repeat this process three times to prepare a new mask. Just rinse and repeat and do it until you get a nice quick defog moment. If my mask has been stored for a while, I'll give it one round of paste before diving again. This just helps prepare the mask after being stored. The second method is slightly more daring, but there's a trick to it. Enter the burning method. Yes. We're going to set that mask ablaze like a pyro. Grab a lighter, preferably one with a long stem to protect your thumb from the flame. If you don't have one, you can always ask the nearest smoker to borrow theirs and a short stem will still work just fine. The key to the burning method is to hold the mask above the flame and keep it moving. Move the flame in circular patterns covering the entire surface of the lens. Avoid holding it in one place for too long to prevent damage. But don't worry, this isn't easily done. Just keep the flame moving slowly across the surface and avoid lingering on the side walls. The burning method is quick and can be done on the fly as long as you have a lighter handy. Either method will work, but I personally prefer toothpaste as there's no risk involved. It just takes a bit longer, so plan ahead. Pro tip, even if you burn the mask, use toothpaste after storing it to clean and prepare it for more dives. Since those heavy fogging days in Palau, I've grown a lot and learned from others along the way. Armed with all you've learned from this video, you're now well prepared to keep those masks crystal clear and enjoy diving to its fullest. But what if I told you there's another key way to experience scuba diving that will change your underwater adventures forever? Check out this next video to find out here. Until next time, happy diving.